Hello, this is Dave Hammer. Today we're going to be looking at building a component of the Cricut Utility Air Hammer. All videos and pamphlets produced by David Hammer are copyright protected. The Cricut videos are available on YouTube for free viewing at this time. I do not give permission for the content to be downloaded nor used for any commercial gain. Metalworking projects require the use of shop equipment. Please exercise caution when using machines. These videos are offered without accepting any liability for your experiences. Your safety is your sole responsibility. This video is the ninth of a series that provides information about how the original Cricut utility or hammer was built. This episode covers the construction of the table and the handbar. Making the table. First, we need to create a cardboard pattern. Use a piece of cardboard larger than the expected table size. The table should cover everything below it and have room for a style to fasten a skirt to to ensure scale does not get to the air circuit components and hoses. Use the table spacer to mark the position of the anvil. The table spacer was made in the Installing Air Circuit Components episodes. This position should be about three quarters of an inch from the lower left corner. Be sure you square it up. This position is desirable to allow forging objects on handle from below the level of the dies. Mark the position of the bolt holes. Draw in the position of the tower. You can do this because you know it's square lined up with the anvil and you also know the dimensions. Use a razor blade or a knife to cut out the tower. Put the pattern over the tower, line it up square, and mark the position of the cylinder. Cut that circle out as large as needed to accommodate what comes through the table with regards to the cylinder. Drill out the anvil bolt holes. You need to do a good job drilling these holes. Put the cardboard over the tower. Bolt the lower die plate in place. Put the ram assembly, including the upper die, on the tower, minus the ramp dock assembly. This is what it should look like. Mark the position of the corner of the ram assembly. Draw the opening needed for the ramp dock assembly after the pattern is removed. If you need to, use tape to resize the opening for the tower. Draw lines on the cardboard to indicate the size the table needs to be to cover everything under it. Be sure to make it slightly larger so you can put styles on the underside to attach a skirt to. This is your table pattern. If you're not sure of the shape needed for the opening for the ramp dock assembly, cut a hole out larger than needed, put the ram and the ramp dock assembly on, then tape around it to identify the shape of the needed opening. Just just remember, it's a moving assembly, so leave some wiggle room for it. Cut a piece of plate steel the size you need for your table. I use 3 quarter inch. Trace the hole positions under the table. Put on your red shoes, close your eyes, tap your heels together three times, and... Poof! The table has been cut and installed. 
And you're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. A peek at the underside uncovers my lack of cutting skills using oxyacetylene. Plasma table would produce a better result. The bar welded around the perimeter is a style to bolt a skirt to. Put the table and the ram assembly back on. Tighten the gibbs to position the ram assembly into its working position. This will show you how the dies line up. If all your setups and alignments were exact, the dies should align. If not, you may need to adjust the holes on the lower die to achieve an acceptable alignment. Install a wiping filter to keep the cylinder rod clean. I haven't done it yet, but I'm thinking about using that heavy fiber around all the openings, including the ramp dock assembly. Install the alignment coupler. You'll need to prop up the ramp assembly to do this. Uh oh, call the cops! The rod wiper disappeared! Make a leather skirt and attach it to the style under the table. I just bolted it. I made it in four pieces. Next, the hand rail. This is the original Cricut handrail. It looks a little different because it had an additional responsibility during the prototyping. Currently, the handrail serves three purposes. One for safety, to stop the ram assembly if the alignment coupler fails. It provides a soft stop with a fiber bumper to prevent the piston in the cylinder from hitting the end cap. The bumper will stop the ram first. Additionally, it's a steady bar to provide a handle for operators, old people like me, to steady themselves while forging. If the cylinder you use has cushions and the handrail is beyond the reach of the highest stroke, you will not need the bumper. Use this handrail design. Make an 8 inch square with half inch round, just bend and weld. Put a 3 by 3 of at least 5 16 inch plate in one quarter. Drill a 3 8 and a quarter inch hole in that and tap and bolt into the top of the tower. Use a rigging ring with a bolt through it for the 3 8 inch hole. Use a piece of 3 quarter inch heavy fiber sewn to the plate on the underside over the tower to serve as the bumper. Only one more build episode. Yay! This is Dave Hammer. Thanks for watching.